Good morning from Hofdorp station in the Netherlands. I'm just about to go into the city centre of Amsterdam because today is day one of Nosferatur, as I'm calling it. I'm so excited just to finally get this tour started. It's been a long time coming, a lot of work into this, and was so excited to share with you the journey. First, here's a little montage of how I got here yesterday. So yes, I started out very well by actually picking up the camera and talking to it because as soon as I got into Amsterdam and found my way to the Trusinski, it was really go, go, go. There wasn't much chance to film lots actually because I often forget just how much you have to do in terms of setting up the organ and meeting and greeting all of the people involved with the organ. It's very important that you do give time to these people to fully hear their story and their connection with the instrument. So there's so much that happens. The wonderful Pathy Jusinski. Time Out magazine voted it the most beautiful cinema in the world and I couldn't agree more. It's a sensory overload. You must visit the Pathy Jusinski if you're ever in Amsterdam or let it be your reason to go to Amsterdam. So I got into the theatre, met the team. Almost immediately I went up onto the organ. I managed to sit down and just have a play through some tunes, some sounds, and nothing really had changed. I actually did fiddle around with some of my registration because I said, oh, you know what, I don't really like that anymore because I want to refine it a bit more. While I was practicing, there was this wonderful moment where a little tour group were being shown around the building and came into the auditorium and uh, one of the team tapped me on the shoulder and said, play something. And so I did, I played a bit of a, a show tune and they took a great interest in it. And it was wonderful that they sat down and really just soaked up the building and learned a bit more about the history. And it gave me a little chance to go just a little wander and appreciate some of the gorgeous building. So we then sort of troubleshooted the film because film is the film, that's great, it works. We just had to make sure it fitted into the screen and to make sure that I could actually see the film. The hours just seemed to fly past uh, just from me sort of fiddling around with the organ, getting everything together. And before I knew it, I was in my dressing room, getting my glad rags on, ready to go on stage. What was really wonderful was that we had a really decent audience in for this. We had about 150 people, which in a theatre like that, isn't going to look like a lot of people, but for a silent film event featuring a pipe organ, that's really wonderful to see because unfortunately, especially post-pandemic, pipe organ events and I guess live music events which aren't mainstream have really struggled to get audiences in. And so it was so nice that I knew that our marketing was selling somewhat. People wanted to come and experience this. People were curious about it. I got myself sat at the organ console down in the pit. That's right, this organ is one of those great instruments which comes rising up through the floor.
after the what we call console riser, I quickly greeted the audience, told them what was in store for them, and reminded them that they are listening to pure acoustic sound, all from pipes, real percussions, real bells, real whistles, etc. And it was time for the film to begin. And so the tour began. To be quite honest with you, the entire film was a blur to me. <laughs> it went in so quickly. After the film, I took a bow to a very appreciative applause, which was lovely. <laughs> I'm an organist, and as much as me and my colleagues would love that to be a really glamorous thing, it doesn't really feel like it these days. And so to have people asking to take selfies with you, talk to you about how you've done it, it's, it's just another world. I made my way back to my dressing room, got changed, and really I was so tired at this point. We just went back to our hotel back in Hoofdorp, had a lovely meal, and went to sleep. <laughs> Now, the Netherlands experience wasn't quite over yet. On Sunday, I had a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to visit Dordrecht and play a concert. It's one of the more surreal places I've ever played for. And the canteen of this factory is this standard theatre organ and a wonderful little Yamaha baby grand piano. And we had a really lovely, relaxed afternoon. I played lots of different music from different eras. After Sunday's concert was done, got dropped off back at our hotel, freshened up a bit, and even though we were really tired, we said, right, we need to go into Amsterdam, because here we are in one of the greatest cities in the world. On Monday, we had some time to enjoy a bit more of being in the Netherlands. We went for our first bike ride, and I'm very glad to say there is no footage whatsoever of that. We had some lovely lunch and just took it easy and got our way to the airport. I had to go on a flight over to London Heathrow because actually the next day I was attending a conference. Checked into a hotel there. Tuesday was the conference and I ended up getting the, the Caledonian sleeper home. And so here we are, Wednesday. And tomorrow I'm off down to Saltair. So that's going to be exciting. That will be Nosferatu performance number two, and indeed Nosferatu vlog number two. So if you want to see what happens then, watch the next vlog. There's still another few weeks left of tour and it's exciting. Yes, it's so tiring, but it is so worth it. I hope that there's something in these videos that you will enjoy watching. Here's to the rest of the tour.